uh, you see, you're seeing a patient in the office, and you uh, uh, and you uh, uh, both uh, decide that the patient needs a, a hysterectomy. How do you counsel her about a hysterectomy, and what's your uh, preferred route of doing it? Okay, so uh, if the patient, um, if we decided that the patient does need hysterectomy. I usually like to uh, go over the patient's medical history to make sure uh, she doesn't have any um, uh, medical conditions that needs to be cleared um, and on also any me uh, if she's on any medication that needs to be stopped prior to surgery uh, and then I would do a um, detailed physical exam uh, taking um, and also review her uh, imaging to see uh, what's the best route to uh, perform the hysterectomy. Uh, the preferred route will be a vaginal hysterectomy if patient is a candidate for it. Um, and then uh, the next um, best option will be a laparoscopic and then um, and then it will be a, a TAH uh, if those two are not feasible. Why are those two uh, your uh, preferred uh, options? Um, because they have the they're the least uh, minimal invasive uh, vaginal would be, um, and then uh, the patient will have has the best um, perioperative outcome. Okay, can you uh, like explain more, like in terms of what? Oh, uh, like why? Uh, like why is it, it better why is it than better? TH? Okay, so, uh, so for t TVH, um, uh, because we're not making a, a large uh, abdominal incision, um, and also the uh, surgery tends to be um, uh, a little bit shorter, um, and then patient uh, can go home on the same day uh, with minimal blood loss. Um, and then laparoscopy, usually you do need to enter the abdomen. Um, so patient usually has uh, more pain. Uh, there's higher risk for uh, uh, infection and um, and wound, uh, wound infection and wound uh, dehiscence or, va or vaginal cuff dehiscence. Um, so uh, vaginal would be the, the uh, the best approach if, if, okay. if feasible yeah okay and i okay so for vaginal hysterectomy i think you said if a patient is a good candidate what makes a patient a good candidate for a hysterectomy for a vaginal hysterectomy and what makes her a bad candidate for a, or a poor candidate for a vaginal so for a vaginal hysterectomy i would like to uh make sure the the uterus is not um too big uh usually um, I'm looking for less than uh, s s less than eight centimeters. Um, preferably, patient has uh, vaginal deliveries. There is a descent um, on the on the uterus uh, when I uh, when I do the uh, vaginal exam, and also the patient's uh, vagina is uh, of a appropriate size. Um, I think that's the most. Um, what about the, a patient? What if the patient had four C-sections? Would you do a vaginal? Oh right. Section? So, so if the patient had any type of uh, uh, abdominal surgery, that will make it a little bit harder to do this um, the vaginal surgery. Okay. Endometriosis too, and like uh, the angle. Or, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, any any uh, like access. Yeah. Any like pelvic uh, pathologies or abdominal surgeries, right? Right. Or, and yeah. then, uh, and then, like, and then, like, good access to uh, the sacrum, like, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like, uh, you can reach the uh, uterus sacrals and like the cardinals easy on exam. Like, it's not something that you would uh, struggle to do. Which you said, like, not a small vagina. So yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Uh, all right, uh, can you uh, dictate a TVH, doctor? 
do you, do you do them in your practice? Um, I, 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 I would try to do them if possible. However, um, I do have limited experiences at this time. So if I do have a patient who's a candidate, I usually have, um, I will have someone who is yeah. more experienced with me to help me with the surgery. Perfect. So can you uh, dictate one? Or you're not? Uh, no. Yes. So okay. so the patient will be uh, taken to the OR and uh, put under general anesthesia and she's put under um, uh, uh, total lothotomy precision and the, the legs will be in um, Allen stirrups. Uh, the uh, pelvis and the vaginal area will be prepped with uh, betadine um, and the uh, uh, sp speculum will be put put into the uh, vagina and the uterus will be the, the cervix will be grasped with the double tooth tenaculum um, the cervix will be injected with uh, lidocaine with epi epinephrine uh, circumferentially and uh, a incision will be made uh, uh, circumferentially around this oryx uh, down to the uh, paracervical fascia and the uh, posterior cul-de-sac will be uh, entered um, by um, using metabomb scissors uh, with a the okay doctor what's the course of the ureter uh, the ureter uh, exits the um, renal pelvis and um, courses uh, along the psoas muscle down to the pelvic brain. It crosses the uh, pelvic brain at the bifurcation of the um, common iliac artery. Um, it then uh, traverses peritoneally uh, posterior to the ovarian fossa and then its course becomes more medial as it uh, um, courses down the pelvis. Um, it's found in the uh, medial leaf of the Brock ligament. Uh, it crosses under the uterine artery, one to two centimeters um, lateral to the cervix and uterosacral. It crosses through the um, cardinal ligament um, through the uh, tunnel of wartime uh, and into the uh, nice. trigon of the bladder. Nice doctor. No, very nice. Very nice doctor. All right. Cool. Yeah. Nice work, man. You want to keep going or uh, do you want to ask me? Uh, do you want me to ask you one more or you want to ask me here? Uh, why don't you ask me one more and then I'll, I'll sure. ask you some questions. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. I'll ask you two more. All right. Uh, so we have a patient uh 18 year old uh with secondary amenorrhea in the office she is obese her bmi is 45. she has uh you can see there's like hair on her uh, lips and stuff on her like uh you know uh, like above her uh, lip and she's g2p0 and she's seeing you because she wants to know what's going on with her and uh why is she not uh like she wants to know if she's pregnant or if she can get pregnant and then uh What's your uh, differential diagnosis and how do you like, like evaluate this uh, patient and like how do you counsel her? How, how old is this patient again? 18, 18 years old. Oh, 18. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I would, uh, so the differential for this patient would be, uh, you know, top of the list will be PCOS. Uh, however, I do need to uh, rule out other possible ideologies such as uh, now, uh, non-classical uh, CAH, um, hyperthyroidism, hyperplactinemia. Um, if she's having hirsutism, I would still need. I also need to rule out um, uh, um, antigen-producing uh, tumors such as uh, you know, ovarian or adrenal tumors. Um, uh, I feel like I'm forgetting one other thing. Um, so for her, I would uh, um, do a history 
um, asking her when her uh, period started and also um, when did she start having um, the irregular periods and how how her irregular periods are like um, and how often that she's getting them um, mm -hmm. I would order the doctor can the doctor can can you define secondary amenorrhea she has so, secondary amenorrhea. Yeah, so, so secondary, secondary amenorrhea? amenorrhea means that she uh, was having regular periods and um, for a secondary uh, ideology, she, her periods uh, started having, uh, started become irregular. Um, so if she used to have regular periods, uh, secondary amenorrhea means uh, she has amenorrhea means that she hasn't had a period for three months. Um, if she never had a regular periods, then it will be uh, six months or more since her last nice. uh, period. Very nice, doctor. And what is uh, primary dysmenorrhea? What's the what's uh, uh, the definition of that? Primary amenorrhea or dysmenorrhea? Dysmenorrhea. Primary dysmenorrhea is um, the patient start having um, uh, pain. No, uh, uh, don't do that in the exam, right? Don't like telling them, oh, primary amenorrhea or, because then they're going to tell you, okay, tell me what primary amenorrhea uh, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I think Shamroth uh, said that. Like, don't say something that you're not able to follow through on. Oh, whatever. yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean this? <laughs> but, yeah, okay, tell me about this. Yeah, tell me about this. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> exactly. Oh, shit. <laughs> See, that's the thing, yeah. like, you don't even think about those things. You just, like, right. you know, like an exactly. innocent exactly. question. Exactly, then, yeah. Um, uh, so someone told me, I think someone told me something very helpful. It's 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 sort of like a legal uh, affair, too. Like, they're, like, they will be listening to every word that is coming out of your mouth. So if you need to take a second to think before you answer, just so you can get yourself in trouble, because it really is like if you, uh, but also like don't stay quiet, I guess. But uh, yeah. like take a second and then and then uh, and then answer, but just be careful because you know, uh, yeah, yeah, these people. Uh, they're like like watching everything you do, everything you say. Uh, so yeah, just uh, yeah. you know, no, no, uh, that's totally that's, that's how they do it. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, okay, so right, so, what, so uh, primary, primary this yeah, the primary dysmenorrhea is when the patient um, is uh, started having um, pain symptoms. Um, I believe as soon as she started having. Uh, uh, her her periods um, and uh, all the other uh, ideologies are ruled out. Okay, I, does it happen uh, 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 when in the menstrual cycle? Does it happen? It's uh, correlated with her menses. Um, so usually, when when she when she is having her her um, her menses. Okay, and what is uh, PMS and PMDD, doctor? Uh, PMS and PMDD is a... Um, Any, uh, can you define both? Yeah, so uh, PMS is uh, when the patient has um, a psychological or a mood um, symptoms uh, around her period usually it starts um, uh, five days uh, less than five days before her period and ends uh, when her periods end. Um, the difference between PMS and PMDD I believe uh, PMDD has um, more criteria um, and it has to have uh, some effective mood um, nice. disorder yes, mood such sensitive. as uh, yeah uh, such as uh, irritability or uh, a significant depressed mood or um, an an anhedonia um, that will make it um, PMDD as opposed to PMS. 
Okay, cool. Uh, all right. And uh, last question. Uh, how, how do you treat uh, yeast candidiasis with like candida albicans? And how do you treat non candida uh, yeast? And how do you treat severe candida? And how do you treat recurrent uh, yeast infection? Four things. So, okay, so for regular, uh, you know, uh, random episodes of um, candida, uh, I usually use um, diflucan, um, just one dose, 150, uh, 150 milligrams peel, one dose. Um, if And what's the alternative to that? Uh, you can also use um, terconazole, uh, like a three-day course of uh, vaginal terconazole as well, um, if patient prefers uh, the vaginal route, uh, a vaginal sure. cream. Um, okay. And then for the uh, non-albacan um, candidates, um, I usually recommend using um, boric acid, uh, 600 milligrams, um, is it daily, mm-hmm. uh, daily, QHS. yeah, uh, QHS uh, for yeah, 14 Q- days. QHS for 14 days, um, if patient has recurrent candida that's responsive to, what about severe? Let's do severe first. Oh, so so severe, se- symptoms, severe like with severe months. symptoms. I would do a a longer course of um, the diflucan. Uh, usually, will be one fifty milligrams uh, PO times three doses. Uh, Q seventy two hours, um, or right. a longer course of the terconazole, like a seven day course, a vaginal course. Nice. Good. Um, and, then and then for recurrent, I would do mm-hmm. uh, if it, if it's uh, confirmed uh, albicans, then I would do a uh, 150 milligram uh, weekly one time one time weekly uh, course for six months. Mm, okay. Yeah, I like your treat, and then you do uh, 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 once a week for six months. Yeah, cool. Right. And then the. Uh, and uh, the MLC articles I sent you, there was one about Uticiconazole. Yeah, UTC- I read about that. Did, did you read that? Uh-huh. Yeah, so that's helpful for like recurrent yeast too, and you can mention it. It'll make you look really smart and really good. Except uh, on, o- when they're going to gonna ask me what's the contraindication. What's the doses? Or what's the dose? I'm like, uh, do you know? Uh, you, you, you can mention it. No, uh, uh, I read it on like on like up to date quickly, but I don't remember any like s- serious issues with it. Uh, mm. But it's for uh, recurrent yeast, really. It's not for like regular yeast, uh, and it shows uh, higher like efficacy than uh, than like the other uh, uh, like azoles for uh, for like recurrent yeast. So yeah, so you, you know you can mention that. But I guess I don't know. Do you, uh, do you think that's something we shouldn't do? Like, if you don't know uh, something, maybe you can say like, "Oh, I, I believe there is a a new medicine recently uh, approved or recently that came out." Uh, you know, we can, we can like mention the name, um, but I will have to read more about it before I start prescribing to patients or something like that. You can yeah. just like kind of you know mention there's something. Like the right. for like postpartum depression, you know the um, zoranolone. Zoranolone, yeah. you know you can say like, oh, like I know there's a medication that you can give for uh, two weeks, um, you know, and then it's been very effective. Um, but uh, I will have to do more research on how to you know how to prescribe what the dosing is and the um, side effects. Oh, or yeah. something like that. And uh, cool. All right, and uh, yeah, and the dictation question. I think you did really good. There's, uh, I think, if they ask you to dictate something, you can be very detailed. Like you can, uh, like you can be like you're uh, dictating it for your op report. So you can say like, 
the tissue was like grasped with a forceps and elevated and then a medicine bond of scissors was used to like uh, dissect the plane until like entry into the posterior peritoneum was achieved you know like you mm -hmm. can really go for it mm -hmm. uh, and that will really uh uh buy you time you know like yeah the, yeah uh, so i'm sure they'll cut you off at very fast yeah exactly like yeah no, it, you're it, not gonna mm, waste my time <laughs> if they found yeah like if they find that you're uh, doing well they would probably yeah like if like if they cut you off like from my understanding it's not a bad thing yeah uh, they cut you off either you're just wasting time and saying like uh <laughs> maybe that they probably just go somewhere else but or or they just cut you off because you're you really know it and then they want to move you're right on. yeah so one right. or the other i guess did you know your examiners yet like did you find out who's examining you or no, no you 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 find out the the day of oh wow yeah and then you have like i think like five ten minutes to tell them oh i know this person or something like that and they were like switch oh wow or something yeah really mm -hmm. cool yeah, all that's right interesting. let me ask you some questions you want to do some yeah OB since we have i feel like we haven't done OB, or you want to <laughs> do something else I will do whatever you want. All right. I'll just ask you some random questions here and there. Sure. sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, how do you screen? Um, what are the carrier screens that you do for a, a new OB patient? For a new OB patient, I usually, uh, in my practice, I usually perform carrier screening for cystic fibrosis, uh, spinal uh, muscular atrophy, as well as hemoglo uh, hemoglobinopathies uh, for all my uh, pregnant patients. I think I'm forgetting one out, one more, but I'm not sure what it is. Okay. Well, uh, a fragile X, but you can. Or fragile not, X. Uh, yeah. But you don't you don't have to uh, only with like a family history of mental retardation or something or right? or if they or request like, it so or if they request it sure yeah uh-huh uh what if they're a, a ashkenazi jew would you do something different yeah uh i would uh be mindful in that uh, uh in the ashkenazi jewish uh population uh there's uh there's a much higher incidence of certain uh inherited uh, diseases especially those associated with uh, metabolism of the muco uh, uh, polysaccharides and uh, including uh, trans uh, sorry including hexo sorry, uh, tay sachs disease uh, kosher's disease and uh, and uh, amongst uh, many other diseases and i would consider uh, performing an expanded carrier panel uh, to screen for these uh, diseases Okay, there's actually four that ACA recommends, and the rest is optional. Sure. Do you know them? No, I don't. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, we'll go over it later. So yeah. let's see. Uh, let's say a, a 35 year old comes in. Let's make her 40. A 40 year old comes in, um, pregnant. How do you counsel this patient? Uh, I would counsel this patient about uh, the multiple risks associated with a pregnancy at her age, uh, including uh, 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 complications that can happen with uh, her or with her fetus. Uh, for her, the risks would be miscarriage, early pregnancy loss. Uh, if the pregnancy carries on beyond uh, uh, the first trimester, there's a uh, uh, there's an increased risk of uh, chromosomal abnormalities, aneuploidies uh, to the newborn, uh, especially trisomy 21, uh, which I believe the risk can be as high as 1 in 80 for someone her age or even higher. Uh, and also uh, uh, increased risk of uh, uh, preterm birth, uh, as well as uh, uh, preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, uh, postpartum hemorrhage, uh, uh, increased risk of IUFD, as well as increased risk of uh, uh, peripartum uh, cardiomyopathy, as well as uh, cardi cardiovascular disease of the pregnancy. Uh, for the fetus, the risks would include uh, 
uh, increased uh, uh, chromosomal anomaly, increased uh, risk of uh, of uh, multifetal gestation, uh, as would well as. Would you do anything increased... differently for this patient? I, I would have this patient. Yes. Go ahead. I would start this patient in low dose aspirin, uh, ideally by uh, by twelve to fourteen weeks, between twelve to fourteen weeks, uh, and I would continue that until delivery. That's that's the only thing you would do differently. Oh, and I would also uh, uh, I would also uh, make sure uh, uh, the patient is uh, is counseled appropriately about uh, 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 about uh, the recommended uh, nutrition, uh, and I would uh, uh, and I would perform an early uh, glucose uh, challenge test if there are any risk factors of uh, gestational diabetes or if she had. Uh, prior uh, prior gestational diabetes, or if she, uh, uh, or if her BMI is more than thirty, I would also uh, start, uh, and I would also uh, uh, counsel the patient about uh, genetic uh, testing during the pregnancy. I would uh, counsel her about uh, to start with uh, genetic uh, uh, screening tests. Would you, would you just screen start. this patient? Would you um, do neonatal uh, surveillance for this patient? Yes, I would start. Of course, I would start that at 32 weeks uh, via twice weekly testing uh, with uh, with with NST alternating with a BPP. Okay. Um, what about growth 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 scans? I would also perform serial growth uh, uh, serial growth growth ultrasounds on her uh, in the third trimester of the pregnancy. Okay. What are the uh... What are some of the what are the indications to start someone on um, aspirin? Uh, so I would start uh, any patient who has one or more of the major criteria or two or more of the minor criteria on low dose aspirin during the pregnancy. Uh, the major uh, criteria include a history of preeclampsia, multifetal gestation, autoimmune disease such as lupus, antiphospholipid syndrome, renal disease. Uh, uh, chronic hypertension, uh, pre-gestational uh, diabetes, uh, and the minor criteria would include uh, things like advanced maternal age, more than 35 years old, uh, obesity, BMI more than 30, uh, uh, adverse uh, prior uh, pregnant, uh, adverse, uh, adverse, adverse outcome in a prior uh, pregnancy, such as um, uh, a preterm delivery or uh, pregnancy loss, uh, or like uh, uh, IUFD, or an inter, or uh, an inter uh, pregnancy interval of more than ten years. Uh, also, uh, uh, a certain uh, uh, socio so, socioeconomic uh, uh, status or uh, certain uh, racial uh, background uh, would also be. Uh, uh, one of the minor, uh, one of the minor uh, criteria of uh, uh, starting someone on low dose aspirin. Yeah. What are some of the indications for a cyclage placement? So, cyclage placement, the indications would be either history indicated, physical exam indicated, or ultrasound indicated. Okay. What do they mean? So, uh, so, uh, so history indicated would be uh, uh, would mean that uh, this is a circulage that is placed in a patient with uh, with with a history of a prior uh, preterm birth uh, at less than thirty four weeks uh, uh, in the context of uh, cervical incompetence or uh, painless uh, cervical uh, dilatation. And it's usually done between uh, uh, 14 to 16 weeks uh, of the pregnancy. Uh, and then uh, a, a physical exam indicated would be uh, a circulage that is placed in a patient uh, who is uh, presenting with a clinical picture of uh, cervical incompetence, which is uh, painless uh, cervical uh, uh, dilatation not, accom not accompanied by uh, contractions with, uh, with an advanced uh, cervix. Uh, an advanced uh, uh, dilatation of the cervix, and uh, an and an ultrasound in, an ultrasound indicated uh, circulage would be uh, a circulage that is placed 
uh, due to finding of uh, cervical shortening on uh, that were incidentally found uh, in a patient who uh, who doesn't have a history of preterm delivery, uh, a cervical length of 10 millimeters or less would make her a candidate for an, an, an ultrasound indicated cercolage. Okay. Um, let's say you have twins and this twin pregnancy, uh, would, would, would there be any time you would consider doing a cercolage on this twin pregnancy? Uh, I may consider a cercolage uh, due to uh, findings. I may consider that uh, uh, in a patient with uh, uh, like uh, like showing like a clinical picture of uh, cervical incompetence, uh, as long as the patient's less than twenty four weeks, of course, and as long as I uh, run it by uh, by 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 my by my maternal fetal medicine colleagues, and if they think that's uh, something that's uh, that that would be appropriate. Uh, I would uh, I would I would consider that, but I wouldn't place it uh, for findings of uh, 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 cervical uh, shortening on uh, uh, on uh, routine ultrasound. When would you di uh, when would you deliver a die die twin? Assuming In everything is okay. And die amniotic, die, uh, die, die, die chronic pregnancy that are not uh, complicated. I, uh, I, I deliver them between thirty-eight to thirty-eight weeks to six days. Okay. What about uh, a mono die? Mono die twins, not complicated, can be delivered uh, between thirty-six and thirty-seven weeks and six days. Okay. What about mono mono? My mono twins are delivered at 32 weeks by C-section. Okay. Are you sure about... Okay. Um, so mono, mono dies actually 34 to 30, 37. Ever? Mm. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. Do, do, do. Uh... What, uh, let's say that patient, um, the forty-year-old patient, um, the you did an NIPT on her, and then the NIPT is uh, positive, positive for trisomy uh, twenty-one. What is the, and then the patient asks you, what are the chances of this pregnancy um, being a true true twenty-one? So I would, so so I would counsel the patient, and I would uh, recognize that uh, the cell-free DNA is a test that uh, uh, it, uh, the interpretation of its uh, results uh, uh, depends on the pre-test uh, probability of of of, uh, of the test. And for a patient who is uh, who is forty years old, she would have a very high uh, pre-test uh, probability. And I would uh, counsel her that uh, the results are. Uh, very much likely to be true, and uh, we would, uh, and I would then recommend uh, uh, moving forward with uh, diagnostic uh, uh, genetic testing for her. Okay, can you give me a number uh, of uh, how uh, accurate it is? Yes. So basically, the the what's the positive predictive value of a oh of NIPT? Uh, NIPT yeah, so I think in uh, in a patient who is forty years old, it may be uh, it's more than ninety five percent, but I'm not sure of the exact number. Okay. Um, do you want me to keep asking? Yeah, yeah, keep going. Uh, let's see. How, how am I doing? No, you're pretty good. Pretty good. Not bad. Uh, so it's actually ninety five percent. <laughs> oh wow! <Yeah. laughs> okay. So I have to say more then, right? right? So, <laughs> so so for someone who's actually, uh, if someone's low risk, it's lower. It's um like like let's say if she's like twenty five, then the mm -hmm. the PPP, PPV is eighty five percent for Down syndrome. Um, mm -hmm. just because of her, the, you know, because she has a, a lower pretest value, so. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. 
and then let's say um okay so this this patient um has a a two vessel cord well not the mm. patient the, the the fetus um it, she's found to have a two vessel cord how would you manage this patient uh differently so uh patients with a two vessel cord or with a single uterine artery uh they are at a higher risk of uh, uh fetal uh, growth restriction and i would uh be uh, mindful of that and i would uh counsel the patient about that and i would uh perform serial uh growth scans for this patient uh to monitor uh and rule out uh fetal growth restriction for her okay um does this patient at is this patient at increased risk for for anything else uh yes i believe that may also uh increase the risk of preeclampsia and uh uh secondary to like abnormal placentation uh and like uh uh abnormalities with uh the placenta okay um Let's say let's say that this patient doesn't want to get an anatomy ultrasound. Um, mm. How would you counsel this patient? Um, I would counsel her that I would consider uh, the anatomy scan uh, a routine part of uh, uh, prenatal care for uh, uh, for uh, for any patient, and I uh, and I consider it uh, part of my uh, a, a routine prenatal care. Uh, and I would, uh, and I would just uh, uh, counsel her uh, regarding the risks of us missing uh, a structural, a, st a, st a structural abnormality on that scan that might be uh, detected later at the time of birth and uh, without us knowing. I would, I would also counsel her about. Uh, 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 I would also consider uh, uh, referring her to um, to maternal fetal medicine for uh, uh, for like further counseling and uh, uh, and uh, and I would also consider uh, performing uh, a genetic screening tests for her and uh, based on the results I would consider and uh, as well as a, as well as a carrier screening and uh, based on these results I would consider. A, a, referral to a genetic counselor okay so basically um if you have a single uh umbilical artery you're at higher risk for uh other structural abnormalities so these patients really need to get a um anatomy scan anatomy. so but if the anatomy scan or there's no other um abnormalities found these patients are pretty much there there's no they, there's no increased risk for 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 anything but any employee I, and stuff yeah, no, yeah no so there's no yeah there's risk. no increased risk for any employee or anything so the the, right. the the monitoring you don't need to do like surveillance or anything if if it's a mm -hmm. isolated um single uh, umbilical so, artery. yeah okay. yeah What's the what do you call it? What's the structure like uh, cleft lip, uh, cleft palate things that are like isolated like that or like palatus or whatever? Yeah, I think um, cleft lip um, or like uh, um, e uh, hyper like echogenic bowel or mm -hmm. like intra the soft markers and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. intracranial of uh, like what is it called? Hyper genic intracranial focus or mm -hmm. um um the one in the brain the the, uh, the plexus yeah so those are all um could be just you know one one single isolated marker with no uh significance so sure. right um okay uh Let's see. 
Do, do, do. Can you tell me? Um, I think I asked you this question already. Can you tell me <laughs> what are the positive? Uh, what are some of the false positive? Um, Causes of RPR. Reason for RPR. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, pregnancy, increasing age, uh, autoimmune disease such as lupus, uh, leprosy, uh, positive uh, uh, a uh, uh, ANA. Uh, I believe that uh, that is what's coming to my mind right now. Okay. Um, would you? Uh, how many times do you screen for syphilis in a pregnancy? Uh, it it is recommended that you screen for uh, syphilis uh, uh, two times uh, during the pregnancy at the first uh, prenatal visit and uh, once more in the third trimester. Okay. Do you know why? Uh, uh, because uh, uh, it may take uh, it may take a period up of uh, up to six months for a zero, a zero, a zero conversion to happen uh, uh, in uh, infections of syphilis. Uh, so that uh, is probably why it's uh, recommended to be done uh, at uh, at such an interval. Okay. Good. Uh, let's see. Do you know, let's say, let's say this patient is pregnant and it comes in with a um, severe migraine in the ER. How would you um, evaluate this patient? Okay. Uh, how many weeks is she? She's, uh, she's 20 weeks. 20, okay. Yeah, I would uh, uh, I would uh, perform a history and a, uh, and a physical exam. I would uh, uh, I would be asking the patient uh, um, how long has she had the migraines for? Are they associated with any uh, symptoms of aura? And has she been on any uh, medications for them uh, that like uh, like like prior to pregnancy that she's not taking anymore uh, uh, during the gestation? Uh, I would also uh, inquire if she sees a neurologist. Are they following up with her during the pregnancy, or uh, how is she how is she uh, managing that right now uh, uh, while she's pregnant? And uh, I would also inquire what are some of the precipitating factors that uh, bring on a, a migraine for her, and uh, what are some of the relieving factors. Uh, then I would uh, examine her uh, for. Uh, uh, I would uh, I would evaluate the fetus and I would uh, uh, evaluate her, uh, make sure uh, her general exam is okay, that she's not in acute uh, distress and uh, she's not having any uh, blurry vision, tearing in her uh, eyes. Uh, I would also inquire what the nature of uh, uh, of uh, the headache that she's uh, that she's having is, because uh, in the uh, differential diagnosis, I would also include uh, tension headache, which is way more common than migraine and, and a cluster headache as well. Uh, I would also uh, I would also evaluate her vital signs, uh, make sure they're stable, uh, and I would uh, perform uh, a fetal uh, heart rate check to make sure that uh, the fetal heart rate is uh, positive at the time that the patient was seen. Uh, then I would uh, probably uh, inquire if the patient received any medications for uh, treatment while she's in the ED and uh, I would evaluate her symptoms uh, following the administration of that treatment but uh, if the treatment like if uh, giving her uh, Tylenol or even uh, ibuprofen uh, uh, which which would be uh, uh, which would be uh, appropriate at her uh, gestational age uh, I could I would I I would I would consider uh, administering a trial of uh, ibuprofen for her in the ED after okay, I contact I'm gonna, my gonna, maternal I'm gonna stop you. Because sure. I, I just asked you how do you evaluate her. Now you're giving me treatment. Oh. Yeah. Did I say, did I finish the evaluation you think? Um, or, yeah, well, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, because uh, 
um, I think you need to rule out other stuff, right? Right. So, um, like maybe she needs like a CT of the head to rule out stroke. Mm. Mm. Um, and then MRI maybe to see if she has because I'm I'm just reading the the headache in pregnancy and postpartum. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, I I don't know if you read that um the article. No, not really. Yeah. So, so um in that thing it 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 talks about like you know preeclampsia with reverse uh, reversible cerebral vasoconstriction syndrome and press the posterior reversal and uh, cephalopathy and central mm -hmm. venous sinus thrombosis so basically if someone has headache you have to rule out um, all the serious stuff before you can say oh this is just migraine you treat it yeah. And yeah right so yeah. and then with the let's just say it is migraine what would you treat her with in the ER um, I would consider IV hydration and Tylenol and with failure of these methods I would consider maybe PO ibuprofen uh, after I uh, consult MFM uh, but yeah that would be my initial uh, management and then if uh, this uh, treatment fails I would consider a neurology consult to like assist me with uh, treating and ma and like managing this patient okay so ibuprofen one gram is the first thing you do right and then mm -hmm. you you can also give caffeine 200 mm -hmm, like a uh, fear set uh, no fear set has um caffeine it does. It has caffeine, Tylenol, and something else. Uh, the a, a bad B twelve or something. Yeah. yeah, that that one you're not supposed to give. So you're not supposed to give Fearset actually. Um, mm. Yeah. So Tylenol, caffeine, um, a but 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 That's the one that you're not supposed to give, right? That's right. that's the one in in Fearset. <laughs> yes, you're right. Yeah. So it actually, our uh, barbiturate, right? yeah so you're not supposed right. to give that actually it's uh, mm -hmm. not recommended for uh, migraine headaches so um so tylenol uh um caffeine and then you can also give uh reglin mm -hmm. uh alone uh, 10 oh, milligrams alone yeah or with I, benadryl i think i know this article is it the one about uh, uh does it mention like also like one gram of mag uh, in an IV solution with like Reglan and uh, Benadryl and stuff. Mm, yes, I think I read this article. Yeah, I th yeah, because because uh, that's something uh -huh. I do. Yeah, something with, I do. Uh, something. My, my, if they have migraine with aura, you can give one one dose of NSAIDs if uh, in in the second trimester if, if, if that's the second line, and then. Mm. Um, and then triptan, if those all those don't work, you can give triptan, um, and then prednisone as well. So um, oh, wow. yeah, so if, not not fear set though. Okay, right. Uh, uh, but uh, fear set is safe for the pregnancy, uh, uh, right? Like you use it. I usually so fear set. I only give when the patient has. Um, uh post post uh dur like the post punctual headache okay that's the one i give i never gave it during pregnancy i mean it's just it's just a a narcotic it's you know nothing oh actually hold on i had a note about fear said that you're not supposed to give during pregnancy it says something about causing cardiac defects Oh. Yeah, possible cardiac defects. Mm. So, bitorbital containing combo medication not recommended due to risk of overuse, headache, and addiction, and also possible cardiac defects. I guess if long term use, mm. maybe. Mm -hmm. um, All right. Yeah. 
So um, the main thing is to rule out all the all the serious stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the ones that I mentioned. I keep forgetting all those names. Um, uh, press and stroke and. Uh... Yeah, press, and central, the, the subarachnoid hemorrhage, and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, central venous sinus thrombosis, especially if they have a thrombophilia, um, carotid artery dissection. Oh wow. Yeah, sub subarachnoid hemorrhage. So if they have like a thunderclap headache with neck pain, mm -hmm. you think about carotid artery dissection. Um. And then, yeah. All right. All right, cool. All right. And how did I do with like, uh, with like, uh, with like the other uh, questions? Any comments or the any? other ones? I think you did pretty, pretty good. I, uh, you, you might have missed a few things here and there, but I don't, I don't think there's anything like outlandish. Otherwise, I would have said something at the time. Oh, the okay, the thanks. um, the Ashkenazi Jew. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so the there's four that's recommended by ACOG, Tay-Sachs, uh, familiar auto, this uh, dysnomia, mm -hmm. yeah, dysnomia, <laughs> um, and then Canavan, Canavan disease, um, mm -hmm. and then um, cystic fibrosis. So that's the four that they recommend okay. doing. The rest sure. is optional. Um, okay. Yeah. And then the your saccages were, were pretty good. Um, you got all the... Uh, I think the only one you missed was the ultrasound indicated. Uh, it's also indicated in someone who and had someone a previous... With a history of, yeah, history right. of yeah. preterm uh, oh, delivery with 25. 25. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And uh, the twins is correct? Or the twins, the answer is correct? <laughs> <laughs> the, for the for the twins question and the circ and the circulage, yes. So cool. cerv cervical dilation, less than twenty four weeks, you can consider. Sure. Um, and then I think that's pretty much it, right? Anything else I asked you? I don't remember anymore. I think I think that's it. Yeah. All right. All right. All right, Ray. Do you want to do one more before your exam, or what? What are you thinking? Uh, yeah, I mean, you whatever sure? you okay. want to do. Uh, cause well, we have I'm one on doing. Sunday too, right? Oh, we do. With, uh, With what time? I guess one p.m. Still. One. Okay, I'll be post call, yeah. so I don't know. Yeah. But your exams are nice, right? It's on Monday. Uh huh. It's on Monday. Good luck, man. That's yeah. that's very soon. Yeah. I wow. Know, right. Scary. Yeah, are you mm, are you traveling tomorrow or uh No, I'm I'm call Saturday? I'm on call tomorrow. <laughs> oh right, right, right. Oh man. All right, yeah. cool well, man. I Good mean, luck. Uh, maybe if you're uh maybe if you like if you have uh, some time tomorrow around seven thirty or eight or so. Uh yeah. Uh, that's true. Or, or or like whenever, like I'll be in the office, so if I'm done oh, okay. early and so like you, I'm done, like uh, done, five thirty like to six thirty. Regular. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We we yeah, can touch base if let's, you're, uh, if you're let's free. Let's try to shoot for like, about the same time then, like seven maybe. We just do. Yeah, there's another. Uh, there's another friend I'm doing. Uh, oh, she, okay. Uh, she works in the same hospital. Uh, we're supposed to do like six thirty tomorrow. So either uh, before or after. Uh, but yeah, let's let's uh, let's try to. Uh, fit one more in. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do. Okay, we can do after that. After you're done with her. Yeah, okay. sounds good. Yeah, so, sounds okay. good. Her. Just, just yeah. text me. Yeah. All right. Sounds okay. good. All right, my guy. All right. Have a have a good call.